Hello Morris class, it's Miss Bake here and welcome to your Wednesday maths lesson. Today is the 10th of February 2021. In front of you, you have your arithmetic. If you usually complete challenge one, then pause the video here and complete challenge one. If you usually complete challenge two, then pause the video here and complete challenge two. Once you unpause and come back to this video, we will go through the answers. So good luck and see you in a few minutes. OK, Morris, let's go through challenge one, question one. 17 take away 11 17 take away 11 now i could put 17 in my head and i could count backwards 11 fingers but that would take me a long time so i'm going to try and do this in another way so i'm going to take the number 11 and i'm going to break it up into tens and ones so just like in a part whole model i'm going to break it up into one ten and i know that in 11 there is one one now I'm going to take this number 17 and I'm going to first, from the number 17, I'm going to take away 10. And that leaves me with the number 7. Then I'm going to take 1 away from 7, which leaves me with the number 6. So 17 take away 11 equals 6. OK, next one, we have 8 add 9. Now, 9 is the bigger number, so I'm going to put 9 in my head. I'm going to hold up eight fingers and I'm going to count on, okay? So that's 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Fantastic. So 8 add 9 equals 17. Fantastic. Well done, Morris class. Okay, next, this one, it says there's three lots of, which is times or multiplied by, Three lots of two. So three lots of. So how many groups does that make it? How many lots do I have? Three. What number am I counting in? I'm counting in my twos. So let's count in our twos. That's two, four, six. So three lots of two equal six. Fantastic, Morris. OK, let's use the rubber to rub this out underneath otherwise I won't be able to see anything so dun, 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 there we go okie dokie now for our extension question it's something take away something equals one so let's start off with the number 10 ready so 10 take away 9 equals 1 9 take away 8 equals 1 8 take away 7 equals 1. Well done. You are really getting the hang of this. 7 take away 6 equals 1. 6 take away 5 equals 1. 5 take away 4 equals 1. 4 take away 3 equals 1. 3 take away 2 equals 1. 2 take away 1 equals 1. And... Can, if we take one away from one, does that equal one? No, nope, that equals zero. So we can't have that. This is the lowest, the lowest um, number sentence that we can create, which leaves us with the answer one. So it could be any one of these, or even if you start from 20, you can go all the way down. Okay, let's now move on to challenge number two. Let's make my screen a bit smaller because you can't see the tens and ones. OK, I've got 39 add 21. I'm going to use my column addition. 39 add, I don't know what number I was writing there, add 21. So 9 add 1, 10. OK, I'm going to, that's my number 10. I've got zero ones in 10 and I've got one 10 underneath here. 3 add 2 equals 5, add one more equals 6. So 39 add 21 equals 60. Now I'm going to show you another way that we could we could complete this question without using my column addition. OK, so I would look at the number 21 and I would split it up. OK, so 20, oh, sorry, 21 and I would split it up into tens and ones, 20 and one. Now, first, I'm going to add on one to 39. So 1 add 39 equals 40 plus 20 equals 60. So that's another way of doing it quickly in your head that is accurate as well. 
Okie dokie, let's now move on to the second question, which is double something equals 14. Double something equals 14. Now, I know that double five equals 10. And I know that double six equals 12. What does double seven equal? Well done, 14. So another way that we could figure that out is when we, we can count in our twos. So when it says double something or twice as much, so our two times table is always twice the amount. OK, so we could count on our fingers to see which how many lots it takes of two to get up to 14. So two, four, six, eight, ten, which is true because double five is is um, is ten. So that's ten, twelve, fourteen. So double seven equals fourteen. So that's another way that we could figure that question out. OK. The next one that we have is 24 take away something equals 17. 24 take away something equals 17. Now I could start off with 17 and I could count forwards. So let's try that way first and then I'll show you another one. 17 in my head, how many fingers does it take to get up to 24? So 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 24. So 24 take away 7 equals 17. Now, there is another way that you could also do this. You could do 24, and I don't have enough space now because I've been so good at explaining all of these questions to you. Okay, the other way that we could do this is we could use our column subtraction. So 24 take away 17 and what comes up with the answer. So we can't do four take away seven because four is a small number. So we exchange, that becomes one and that becomes 14. 14 take away seven equals 17. One take away one equals zero. So the answer is seven. Okie dokie, Morris class. Now, for your extension question, we have two numbers that take away from each other to get to 19. Now, if I start off my pattern at 30, for example, 30 take away 11 equals 19. And I know that because if I take 10 away from 30, that gives me 20. And if I take away one more, that gives me 19. Then I could do 29 take away 10. Then it would be 28 take away 9. Then it would be 27 take away 8. Then it would be 26 take away 7. Then it would be 25 take away six and 24, take away five, 20, oh, I'm running out of space, 23, take away four, I'll do one more, 22, take away three, there you go. And you can see that pattern. Okay, Morris, we have spent long enough on arithmetic. Now let's dive straight into today's maths lesson. Okay, our learning objective today is, can I divide by two? Can I divide by two? So we are going to be focusing on dividing or sharing equally into two groups or groups of two. OK, so if you don't have a pen and paper already, which I'm sure you do, some children might not go and grab that now and let's move on. OK, I'm going to have to make myself very small for this so you can see the question. OK, here are eight children in front of you. They need to be divided or that means equally shared equally or grouped into groups of two. So I need two children in each group. When it says groups of, that is telling you how many objects or how many children or how many things need to be in one group. So into groups of two. How many groups of two will we have? So first, let's draw our groups. So here's two children. So that's, that's a group. Here's another group, here's another group, and here is another group. So I have one, that's one group, one, that's two, that's three, and that is four. I have four groups, so four groups. Okay, now let's complete our division number sentence. So eight, 
Eight is a total number of children. Remember, when we do a division number sentence, we always start with the total amount, okay? So the total amount of children that we had was eight. So eight now divided by the second number is always the amount of groups, the equal groups that we have. So how many equal groups do we have, Morris class? Show me your fingers. Well done, we have four equal groups. So eight, eight children divided by four equal groups equals two children. So two children in each group. Each group. Okay, now let's look at this question. So this question is asking us to do something a little bit different. Let's read it. It says here are eight children. They need to be divided into two groups. How many children will be in each group? So now, the, this previous question, it was telling us that we need to put the children into groups of two. So the maximum number of children in one group could only be two. We couldn't have more than two children in one group. It says it right here. It tells us in the question. Now, for the next question, it's saying it doesn't tell us how many children need to be in each group. Listen carefully. They Here are eight children. They need to be divided into two groups. So I, what I am going to do is I am going to draw one group here and I'm going to draw another group here. And then I am going to now equally share, remember one for you, one for me. Let's share all of our sweeties. Happy, happy, yeah, you know the song. Let's not, let's not start Miss Bag off, professional shower singer and all. Right, so we need to, I've lost my train of thought, trail of thought. Okay, so I now I've drawn two groups, okay? I'm going to equally share one at a time, and I'm going to say, you, you're in this group, 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 oh, they're twins, you're in this group, and you are, young lady, in this group. So now, what I have done is, these children, oh, oh, dear goodness gracious me, what's going on? Right, let's try that again group is it move oh yes now it grouped sorry about that morris class it just wasn't grouping very well okay now i have two equal groups because i have four children in this group i have one two three four i have four children in this group so chn stands for children and i've got one two three four i've got four children in this group so now I've answered the question. I've equally shared eight children into two groups. So eight children, eight children shared equally into or divided by two groups, because here's one group and here's two groups, equals how many children in each group? Well done. Four children in each group. Now, can you see, I'm just going to go one page back. Can you see the difference? Our division number sentence is the same, but the question was asking us to do two different things. In this question, it was asking us to share. So we, one at a time, I shared the children into two groups. This question was not asking me to equally share. It was saying, put two children into one group. So put them in pairs. So I put two children in one group, two children in another group, two children in a third group and two children in a fourth group. Does that make sense? So for this, we have eight children divided by the number of groups. So the number of groups in this question, we had four groups equals two children in each group. But for this one, the number of groups that we had were two groups and there were four children in each group. Now, if you think that this is a little bit confusing, don't worry, we're going to go through two more examples and you're going to, we're going to work together, okay? So here is another question. It says there are 12 flowers. They need to be divided into groups of two. How many groups of two will we have? Okay, so let me read it again because I wasn't clear. Let me read it again. Here are 12 flowers. 
they need to be divided into groups of two, right? So the question is telling us we need to put these flowers into groups of two. So I need to count two flowers. One, two, right? You're in one group. You're in one group. One, two. There we go. You're in another group. You're in another group. You are in another group. You are in another group. OK, now, how many groups of two will we have? Can you count with me? How many groups of two do I have? Well done. I have six groups. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. I have six groups. So 12 flowers divided by the number of groups. How many groups are there, please? Six. Well done. Equals two flowers in each group. Now, this next question, it says here are 12 flowers. They need to be divided into two groups. So remember, this one tells me how many flowers need to be in each group. It says it in the question. It's telling me I need to group them into groups of two. But in the next question, it's saying they need to be divided into two groups. So I'm going to draw one group here. And I'm going to draw another group here. And now I'm going to equally share each flower into each group. So are you ready? Oh, hang on a minute, Morris. One second. OK, Morris, sorry about that. The flowers weren't moving. So now I've made the move and we are going to equally share one at a time because that's the number one rule of sharing. One goes in here, one for you. And one in this group. One for you. One in this group. One in this group, one for you. And one in this group. One in this group. One in this group. One in this group. One in this group and one in this group and one in this group. Okie dokie. Now I have equally shared one at a time, 12 flowers into two groups. Let's complete the division number sentence. So 12 flowers divided into two groups. Here is one group. And here is the second group. So two, 12 flowers divided into two groups equals how many flowers do I have in each group? Can you count to tell me, please? Show me your fingers. Fantastic. I have six flowers in each group. So 12 divided by two groups equals six flowers. And I'm going to write it here underneath. Six flowers in each group. Okie dokie. Thank you so much for helping me, Morris class. Now, here it says, here are nine flowers. Can you help me share them into two groups? Okay, I can do that. We can do that, can't we? Let's just move them up a bit and then let's draw two groups and see and see if that can work. Let's have a look. That's that's easy enough. Okay, so I need to Share them into groups. Oh, hang on a minute. It says groups of two. Oh, Miss Bay didn't read the question there. So make sure you read the question. OK, so here is one group. Here is another group. Here is another group. And here is, oh, let me just use a rubber because this line is in the way. There we go. Here is another group. Oh, hang on a minute. What about this flower here? He doesn't have a friend. Oh, he's the odd one out. Wait, hang on. Let's see if we've done this correctly, because maybe we didn't read the question. Here are nine flowers. Can you help me share them into groups of two? Yes, so groups of two. So it's telling me I need to have two flowers in each group. So what's happened to this one? Well, Morris, talk to your teddy. Why can we not e why can we not equally share nine flowers into two groups? Talk to your teddy. Did you get the answer? 
we are unable to equally share nine flowers into groups of two because there is one left over. We can't just have a group here by himself. They aren't equal. These are unequal groups. OK, so that was a bit of a trick question for you in there to get your mind thinking. Okie dokie, moving on to the next part of the lesson. Let me make myself a little bit bigger. Big, 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 big. There we go. I'm nice and big now. So at the top, we have the division number sentence. It says eight divided by two equals four. Now here in front of you is a part whole model. So at the bottom, it says when we divide by two, we are finding half of the total amount. So this is only when we divide by two, because remember, when we're dividing or multiplying by two, it's double the amount. So when we divide by two, we are finding half of the amount. So here is four on one side. So what needs to be in our whole? How many counters need to be in our whole, Morris Cast? Can you tell me? Well done. We need to have eight counters in our whole. So let's count out eight. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and I know it's eight because seven, one more, eight. I know it's eight because our, our division number sentence, which is right here, it tells us there are eight, eight of something, so it could be eight counters divided into two groups. There is one group, there is the second group, equals four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Four counters in each group. So when we divide by two, we are finding half of the total amount. So eight, what is double four? Four in one, four in the other. Add them together, makes eight. Okay, let's look at this example. So 12, 12 counters. Now I can't see what it says at the top. 12 counters divided by two equals six. Okay, so now what number or how many counters need to be in the whole? Can you tell me? Fantastic, 12. Let's count them out. One, two, three, four, five, six. Well done, seven. Oh, this one's not infinite cloned. Right, let's try that again. Seven, fantastic. Eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. Fantastic, Morris class. Thank you so much for helping me. So when we, div when we are dividing by two, we are looking for half of the amount we are dividing. So we've got 12 counters all together. 12 counters divided by two groups. Here is one group, here is two groups, and we have six counters in each group. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, Morris, what if I'm going to ask you something now, and I need you to pay attention. What I'm going to ask you is, looking at just this part whole model, so let's delete, let's just rub out all of these extra lines. Now, looking at this part whole model, can you help me create, so I'm going to get rid of this as well, can you help me create a multiplication sentence? So let's just have a think. Let's look at, so first we start off with how many, how many groups are there, Morris? Well done, there are two, two groups. How many counters are in each group? Well done, six. What is two multiplied by six? If you can't do two multiplied by six, do six multiplied by two because multiplication is commutative. Hold up six fingers and count in your twos. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. So two multiplied by six equals 12. Can you see, look at this division number sentence at the top. Now I'm going to tell you something that would blow your mind. Look at this division sentence at the top, okay? So if we, it's almost backwards. Can you see that? So that's at the front and that's at the end. 
Then we've got the two, that's in the middle, that's at the front, and then we've got six. So if we multiply six by two, so if I do, where's my pen? Six multiplied by two, if I times that, it actually equals 12. So a division number sentence, if you do it backwards, it's a multiplication sentence. Now keep that in your head while we move on to the next question. OK, we are going to use multiplication to work out this answer. OK, so looking at this division number sentence, there's a missing box. Now, we, all we have is something divided by or divided into two groups and we have four in each group. So let's first draw two groups. Here's one group. Here's the second group. We need to have four counters in each group because that is what the question, this division sentence is telling us. So four need to be in each group. One, two, three, four. OK, one, two, three, four. OK, now we need to use how many are there all together? Can you tell me the total amount? Can you count them? Well done, eight. Eight is our total amount. Now, we have two lots of, two lots of four. Two lots of multiplied by four equals eight. Can you see how the multiplication sentence is the di division number sentence backwards? Let me show you again on the next example. So we're going to use multiplication to work out this answer. OK, so the question is, again, there are two groups. So something, so a total number divided by two groups equals 10. So there are 10 in each group. That's what this question, the number sentence, is telling me. So I'm going to put one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ooh, nine. Oh, let's move that up there. And ten. And then I am going to do the exact same thing on this side, and I'm going to put them here. So now I have ten on this side too. Okay, I have two lots. Two lots of 10, which equals, or two multiplied by 10 equals, how many, how many counters do I have all together? Well done, 20. I have 20. So 20 is my total amount divided by two equals 10 in each group. Fantastic, Morris class. OK, we're going to do one more example before we move on to your turn. So it says something, we need to work out this box, something divided by 2 equals 12. First thing that we're going to do is we are going to draw our two groups. Did it a bit too big. Then we are going to, how many do we need to have in each group? Well done, 12. So let's share out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And now I'm going to, oops, oopsie daisy. Now I'm going to copy these. Dun, 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 dun. And I'm going to create another group. Oh dear, what's happened there? Let's try that again. Dun, 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 dun. And let's, oh. Oh no, this is not what I wanted at all. Okay, it's not going to copy, so I'll have to do it manually. Back to manual three. I was trying to save time. So what happens when you do when you try to do shortcuts, Morris class? Bad things happen. Six, seven, oh, oh no. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, and last one, twelve. Okay. Pause the video here, Morris class, and tell me, tell me which 
multiplication sentence are we going to write for these two equal groups? We've got two lots of how many in each group? Well done, 12. OK, 2 multiplied by 12 equals how many altogether? Pause the video here to count. Count in your twos. Well done, 24. 24. So the total amount is 24 divided by 2, which equals 12. OK, Morris class. We have come to your part where you need to complete your challenge. Now, if you have found this lesson very tricky, I will give you a code word to use at the end of this video. Also, please rewind the video back and go through, through the examples again with Miss Bates. So, challenge one, question one, there are 10 muffins. There are something in each, muffins in each group. So there is two, we know that because it's two. There are how many groups? One, two, three, four, five. There are five groups. 10, 10 muffins divided by two. Two in each group equals how many groups, Morris class? Well done, five, five. Now, what is a multiplication sentence that we could use to find out this answer? Remember, it's backwards, the multiplication sentence. So it would be five, multiplied by 2 equals 10. Okie dokie. Your second question, Morris class, I would like you to complete this independently. So challenge one children, pause the video here and have a go at this question while I move on to challenge number two. Challenge two, question three, and I'll move myself out of the way. There we go. So complete the number sentences for the arrays shown. When you're looking at the array, Morris class, remember, the reason why the first one is circled is it's showing you you are counting the amount of rows, OK, for A. For B, you are counting the amount of columns, OK? So just bear that in mind when you complete this question. Question number four, there are 14 socks. Amir puts them in pairs. Pairs means in twos. How many pairs of socks does he have? So for this question, you're going to draw 14 socks and then put them into groups of two. OK. And then you're going to complete the division number sentence. So just like this, you're going to complete the So the total amount divided by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven groups equals two socks in each group. Can you please complete the total amount? OK, challenge three, question five. For this one, Morris class, if you have zero divided by two groups, the answer will still be zero. So when we have a zero and it's either in division or in multiplication, the answer is always zero. Zero, okay? So I've seen a few of your tapestries and a few children have um, just, there was a slight misconception. Um, so anything multiplied by zero equals zero. Okie dokie. Now, oh, at the bottom it says, choose two and link the multiplication sentence. For example, it could be six divided by two, so equals, I'm just gonna go through this one, equals three. The multiplication sentence for that would be three multiplied by two equals six. It's literally backwards. So choose two and link the multiplication sentence for the answer, for the division sentence. Okie dokie. Challenge three, question six. Alex has 22 pencils. She puts them into two pots. So she's putting them into two pots. She's sharing them equally one at a time. Each pot has two pencils. Oh, she puts them into pots. Two into pots. Oh, never mind. I didn't read the question properly. She puts them into pots. Each pot has two pencils. So she's grouping them into twos. How many pots does she need? Okie dokie. Extension question. If I know my two times table, so this is Dora, I can use this to help me divide by two. Do you agree with Dora? Explain your answer. Use the stem sentence, I agree or disagree with Dora because, and then complete the stem sentence. And your very last question for the ex sec your second extension question is, now I'm going to read this to you. It's a little bit wordy and you need to do two different things. So I have 24 pence. I divide it equally between two friends. How much will each get? So 
divide it between two friends. Now, in this one, you need to oh, you need to draw two groups and share them equally. So share one penny at a time for each group. Now, I have 24 pence in two pence coins. How many two pence coins do I have? The first thing you're going to do is you're going to draw two pence coins up to the value of 24p. And then you're going to group them into groups of two, just like this. And then how many groups do you have? Consider the two questions above. What is the same and what is different? So this one will really get you thinking for this question, okay? Now, Morris class, we have come to the end of this lengthy maths lesson. I do apologise for it being slightly long. Um, it's only that we had to go through quite a few examples um, because it is a difficult concept to grasp, especially through online learning. Um, so we will be doing some more work on this throughout the week. I hope you have enjoyed and I will see you next time. Take care, Morris. Please upload on Tapestry. Bye-bye.